My name is Heather McBain of Fuji Apple Learning, presenting James Clerk Maxwell, the father of modern physics. Known as the father of modern physics, James Clerk Maxwell is well known in the fields of thermodynamics, photography, nuclear energy, and other similar fields. He discovered the electromagnetic spectrum, which would later lead to the discovery of television, radio, and microwaves. James was born on June 13, 1831 in Edinburgh, Scotland. His family was not wealthy, but they lived a comfortable life. His early education was employed by his mother, Frances, which was typical of the time period. What wasn't typical was how quickly and easily James learned and memorized information. By eight years old, James could recite large portions from the Bible from memory. Unfortunately, his mother passed away in 1839, and his education was passed on to a personal tutor who was less than helpful and rumored to be abusive towards James. On February 12, 1842, James's father, John, took him to a demonstration of electric propulsion and magnetic force. Although James was only 11 years old at the time, the demonstration would drive his education from this point forward. James was later sent to the Edinburgh Academy, but did not fit in well with his classmates. Unlike the other students, James had a strong Galloway accent, which was viewed as being rustic and unintelligent. At the ripe old age of 14, James wrote his first scientific paper which described mathematical curves and was presented to the Royal Society of Edinburgh. In 1847, James left the Edinburgh Academy and began studies at the University of Edinburgh. His first tutors at the university included Sir William Hamilton, Philip Kelland, and James Forbes. In 1850, James left the University of Edinburgh and began attending the University of Cambridge. James was even admitted to the secret society known as the Cambridge Apostles, which was an exclusive society of the intellectual elite. After his graduation, James read his paper on the transformation of surfaces by bending to the Cambridge Philosophical Society which is still active today. In 1865, at only 25 years old, James became a professor at the Marischal College in Aberdeen, Scotland. During this time, he began to focus on the nature of Saturn's rings, which had puzzled scientists for at least 200 years. In 1859, James won the Adams Prize, one of the most prestigious prizes of the University of Cambridge, for his research on Saturn's rings, and the discovery that they could not be solid nor fluid, and therefore must be made of small particles that he referred to as brickbats that orbited Saturn. His theory was confirmed in 1980 by flybys made by the robotic probe known as the Voyager. While he was researching Saturn, James also fell in love and got married. On June 2, 1858, he married Catherine Mary Dewar in Aberdeen, Scotland. His wife was a scientist herself, and she worked alongside her husband. 1860 was an unfortunate year for the newlyweds, as James came down with smallpox that year and was also laid off as two colleges combined to form the University of Aberdeen. As a result, the couple relocated to London. Once in London, James went to work for the King's College, where he would display the first light-fast color photo. Despite his work at the college, he would not stay there long and resigned in 1865.
Shortly after leaving King's College, James and his wife moved back to Glen Lair, where he continued his research on gases, electromagnetic induction, magnetic flux, electrostatistics, and displacement current. He also wrote the textbook, The Theory of Heat. In 1871, James would return to teaching as a professor of physics at the University of Cambridge, which would be his final position. At the age of 48, James died of abdominal cancer on November 5, 1879. In his final days, James said to a colleague, I have been thinking how very gently I have always been dealt with. I have never had a violent shove in all my life. The only desire which I can have is like David to serve my own generation by the will of God and then fall asleep. Thank you for watching Fuji Apple Learning with Heather McBain.